Hi, and welcome to uh, our first public uh, demo of our next generation CMS. This uh, demo is based on the Milestone 4 uh, release and uh, we'll be showing you some of the basic concepts you can expect uh, from the solution. Let's dive right in. Uh, what you see here is uh, the uh, home screen or start screen or application selector, whatever you like to call it. Uh, this is where you find the different applications that are installed in the system. And the nice thing is that you can create your own uh, applications and add them here. So um, we'll dive into the content manager application, which is the core part of the CMS. And um, what we get here is, um, is the basic uh, layout of uh, an application. And uh, you should know that all applications have this common ribbon at the top, uh, enables you to go uh, back and forth like this into the uh, application selector menu, launch another application, and go back and back again. <laughs> so, and then there's the name of the application and clicking this one takes you to this page always. Furthermore, you see that we have <coughs> a traditional browser uh, tree navigation view here where I can drill into the different parts uh, and you see, okay, here's some images. So if I click uh, an image, I get an instant preview here to the right. And you see, I can also use the keyboard to, to navigate there. If I collapse this, uh, there's also the possibility to, um, to use search. And you see, we have faceted navigation. So if I start by doing a search for a pop, You see, I get hits for some, um, some images and also there's a folder. And whenever there's uh, child elements, you can actually drill into those as well. Another thing that's interesting is, is uh, the possibility to actually select entries. So if I select one uh, and I select two, then we suddenly get a kind of a shopping cart. And this also works across searches. So if I search for Steve, which I see is there. I can choose this one as well and this one as well. And now I can do bulk actions like delete it, open them all, edit them, etc. Um, so, all the way back to where we started. Now I want to create a new web page uh, or a website, uh, a tribute to Edward Monk. So, let's see how that goes along. Uh, clicking new, you get the dialog that uh, enables you to choose if you want to create content or sites or any of them and you see there's a mix there. So if I create a site, I just click here and here's the different site templates or themes or whatever you like to call them, uh, which enables you to go ahead and, and create something. So I'll be choosing the Sion theme. Um, And there we go, we get the form. We'll call this the Edward Monk Tribute Site. You also see that instantly the URL is generated here, so I can change that one to something simpler. And I'll continue into the form. And uh, I should just quickly mention that there's a concept of forms uh, inside the solution that's uh, being used across multiple locations. We'll see a few of them today. And probably the most interesting thing is that uh, uh, you can actually customize your own input fields, not only create your own forms, but you can create your very own input types here. So the first one here is an image uh, selector, and I can uh, use this to choose an image from the repository or upload one. So I'll be uploading one here. I'll choose... Um, logo yeah this one should be fine and whenever that's been uploaded it's actually created as a separate content so by choosing it i can also edit this one so if i click edit you'll see we'll open a new a new uh, document here at the top and you see i can now toggle back to this one back to the image i'll just close it for now So, also, um, we'll just fill in the form then. Here 
Because the next thing I want to, uh, to talk about, these are basically blocks that enables you to add multiple inputs into a block and then they are du possible to duplicate. So let's show you what that means. Um, there's the location. This is where Monk uh, used to live. I'll just give some dummy data. And I'll add another location. So uh, there you see we get the focus in the right uh, element on the new uh, new location. And uh, and I'll just give it some dummy data. And there's uh, actually also the possibility to order this. So now I change the order. Also, this uh, template seems to want to uh, know about the different social uh, things we're on. So let's say we're on this, and uh, yes, there it is. Uh, if I now go back to the content manager start page, you'll see I have this new Edward Monk tribute site there. And also, if I expand it, you see that there, that's the location where the logo has been created. And um, if I click the site, you see I can instantly see what it looks like. Going back into uh, the, uh, the form, I can go to the next step. And here I can configure the different modules that are uh, loaded on this site. So there's the Google Analytics module. I'll just add the Google key and uh, I'll save it. And if we go back to the browser view and uh, select this one, we can see from the a detail view here, we can also choose uh, the Google Analytics um, module and it will show, uh, for instance, the live integration with Google and how the traffic is. And this area is also pluggable, so that's nice to know. You can add your own apps, but uh, this app can also be customized uh, even further. Uh, going back to the form, we, we now uh, have the ability to also toggle to uh, live edit because this is a typical landing page we want to we want to uh, set it up and uh, as you can see here there's there's uh, virtually nothing here at the moment uh, it's just the settings I did where you get the address and the dummy data here and the Facebook LinkedIn and Twitter stuff going uh, but we need to set it up with something more interesting so First of all, you can see that uh, there's a park on this page and parks are basically uh, uh, from a larger set of things called components. So uh, if you see here, we have uh, four different components, uh, component types at the moment. There's images, there's parks, there's layouts and text. If I want an image on the front page, I'll just drag an image component in and I can choose now an image directly from the repository or upload one. So if I choose the famous scream image, open. There it is. Uh, then we uploaded a few different images. And you can see that they are taking a lot of place here. So maybe we want to um, add some uh, some more interesting start as well to this page. So I'll add a part. And when I add a part, I can choose from different parts that are loaded uh, into the website. The parts come from the different modules. So you see that there's something called page header here. So I'll choose that one. And currently the page header just simply lists the page title. So uh, we'll, we'll change this to something more interesting uh, from this right area here. You can see you get uh, settings for the selected component. So that's the way it works. Every time you select a component, you can optionally do settings to it. So welcome to our site. Attribute to. And by saving it, we should have, have an update. So there it, there it is, it looks fine. So uh, then there's uh, an interesting possibility there. What if, uh, what if I just want to create this, uh, design the layout uh, 
and more detailed like I wanted to look. So I can choose a layout. I'll drag in the layout. I can now choose between two different layouts that have been installed there. So there's the three column and the 70-30. So I use the three column. And now I can move the images into the different columns or regions here. Oops. There we are. And yeah, that looks quite good. Now we're better off. And then there's the interesting possibility of actually uh, emulating different uh, clients. So I can, for instance, emulate how this will look on the iPad. And you see the, uh, the template or the theme here is a uh, responsive theme that will adapt to any kind of device. What about the Galaxy? What about the iPhone 5? Yeah, seems to be working. And you see how the layout actually also collapses. So, uh, and there's no limits or no restrictions here. It's entirely up to the uh, designer and the developer for how this shall work. So going back to uh, the full screen mode, I can also do another interesting thing. Uh, I want to change uh, the layout because I think uh, another layout would look better. So I'll select the image and I'll select the container of the image and there. Now we, we selected the layout and from the context menu I can now see that I can choose to swap between the available layouts. So I'll choose the 7030. And there you go. So we'll save that for now. Um, going back to the content manager, and we see we have the famous people folder. Um, and I now want to create some more famous people there. Uh, we see we have Steve Jobs, Henrik, and Edward Grieg. So I'll click here and I'll click new. This time I'll just search for person and click. And you see now we get uh, the uh, the form for person, and um, we'll create uh, Henrik Vergelon, and we'll upload the photo frame as well. There it is, and author. So there we are, save and close. So you see I have a lot of people um, in the repository and I now want to add some information about these guys on this page. So what I'll do, I'll go back to the insert area. I'll add another part that I have. I'll choose person list part. And you see, I can now configure it. I'll choose a title. Uh, comrades in the art. Friends of the time. And here's another input type that enables me to select different uh, other content items in the system. And I can choose now these three. And apply. And save. So there we are. And um, another nice thing to know is that you can actually also change settings for the entire page by clicking the page. I get some settings here. You see it's using the standard page template and it has some setting called uh, keywords and description. Uh, I can choose another one like the banner page template. You see it reloading and we can actually add some slides here. Um, um, and we'll save these changes. And uh, you see how flexible it all is by enabling me to to add any kind of information, uh, both structured, like we have here and unstructured when we're designing the web page ourselves. So basically it enables me to 
to work with uh, both uh, large data sets that are structured and even go in and tailor a single a single one of them uh, by setting up the, the page around it. So I'll just close this and um, that was all we uh, had today. Uh, hope you enjoyed it and uh, thanks for watching.